I gotta say, just gather around me, and then uh, you threw a load out, and then. Um... Okay, so the minutes responsibilities, um, have, how we've got it, how we've got it set out as an SOP now in ETR. So your first responsibility. So there are two types of medic. There is the fire team medic, which is what we use mainly on the public server, um, and there's the platoon medic, which is what we use mainly on operations. As a fire team medic, you are first and foremost an infantryman, um, and as a platoon medic, you are a corpsman. You are literally that is your role. You you are there purely as a attached corpsman. Whereas as a fire team medic, you are a fire team member trained in battlefield first aid. So that that's the difference. But the responsibilities are pretty much the same. Um, so your main your main responsibility within the fire team is welfare of the squad member. Um, or welfare of the rest of the squad. Um, so, w as the AR's guard job is to suppress the enemy, the grenadier's job is to use indirect fire, the medic's job is to, you know, treat casualties. Uh, so, uh, other responsibilities that become part of that, that makes you quite a vital role um, to allow the fighting leader to, or the section commander, to keep the squad out in the field for longer without having to come back to base um, because you're able to triage and stuff like that. So the main responsibilities, apart from the uh, welfare of the squad members or things that you should be aware of in role, is that the big one is stay off point. Um, so as, uh, as a medic, you want to be mainly towards the rear of the element or in a large element to the center of the element. You shouldn't be doing things like going on point. Um, you know, you should be more providing flank security or rear security. Um, you know, you're not the first guy into a compound. You shouldn't be manning in place weapons. All right, that's somebody else's job. And that goes for cruiser weapons on vehicles as well. All right, so your job is uh, welfare of the squad. Um, so let, you know, your riflemen uh, worry about serving cruiser weapons and stuff like that. Uh, there may be times when you're in a fixed OP that you may need to do that. Um, because that's, um, but that's when your job as an infantry, your, as a fire team medic, uh, where the infantry role will take precedence. Uh, you've got to be comfortable with the use of smoke, which you all are, um, and you've got to be uh, comfortable with triage of patients, which we're going to go through now. And that's basically, you know, what you need to know as a medic. Uh, has anyone got any questions on that bit? Nice. Okay. No. So the main bulk of ACE is, and where people get a bit hung up on stuff, is, you know, how to treat all the different wounds, especially the way ACE has changed and the way it's structured. So uh, I'm not going to go, you know, uh, if you, uh, there's nice to know stuff and there's need to know stuff. What I'll do is that the best thing to do if you want to get into the nitty gritty of it all is go to the ACE Medical Wiki. It's a really simple structured document that tells you how to use all the ACE medical features. Um, what, what we're going to cover here is what you need to know as a fire team medic and then, you know, how that, how your role in the casualty drill, it, it, you know, how it evolves. So, like I said, I'm not going to go into great detail on all the different types of equipment and how to treat wounds. I'm just going to treat how, how you should treat a wound, um, like, as a basic point. And I'm you know, I'm not going to go about all the different blood pressures and stuff like that. Again, you know, that's more of a, an advanced medical role that you should probably look at that document yourself um, if you want to take the platoon medic role. Okay, so the types of wounds that we have, and they basically come in priority wounds. So these are serious wounds, medium wounds, and uh, low priority wounds. So, and we're, I'll do them in order of priority. So this is a, so basically um, there are two types of casualty an unconscious casualty and a responsive casualty. Your priority t t uh, casualty will always be the unresponsive casualty because the responsive casualty can tell you what's wrong. The unresponsive one can't. So if you've got more than one casualty and you need to break it down, your priority will always be conscious ca uh, unconscious casualties. So more than one casualty, unconscious casualty. Secondly, so a secondary triage is where the wounds are. So he people, and, th and this is the order you should treat wounds also. So head and torso injuries take a priority over injuries on the limbs. So people with head and chest injuries take priority over arms and legs. And similarly, if with one casualty with multiple wounds, treat the arms and the head and torso first and then move on to the arms. There's things you can do to help that process, but we'll cover that in a minute. So everyone happy with how to triage someone. So it's unconscious first, 
is your priority, followed by conscious, and then tr order of treatment of order is head and torso, followed by limbs. Everyone happy with that? Yep. yep. Okay, yep. brilliant. Okay, so the types of wounds, how, how do we prioritise the wounds? So a priority wound is something that's going to cause a lot of bleeding very quickly. So, you know, basically how Ace Medical, once somebody's injured, they have a amount of blood, and once that blood runs out, they are dead. So we need to try. To do the, we need to stop the bleeding, but we also need to stop the wounds that bleed faster than others first. So in priority order, our vulsions are always going to be um, uh, in ace uh, are going to be our priority wounds. Uh, they have the fastest amount of bleeding, um, and they cause the highest amount of pain. So avulsions are basically um, uh, what we will aim to treat first. An avulsion in real life is, you know, something being ripped off. So, you know, it's a lot, it's a, it's a massive trauma. Following that is velocity wounds. Um, that, that's the next priority. And then followed that after that is lacerations. So avulsions, velocity and lacerations in that order are priority wounds. Medium wounds are crush, puncture and cuts. Uh, they cause generally slow to medium bleeding. Uh, so we've got slightly more time to play with that. And then low priority wounds are contusions and abrasions. On the ACE wiki, it's got a complete breakdown of what all those wounds are, how people get them, what effects it has on the player and stuff like that. But again, that's more for platoon medic um, and people that are in really interested in the medic role. You just basically need to know which wounds do I need to treat um, and how do I treat them. All right, so everyone's happy with how to treat your patient and um, what wounds there are, what the priority for wounds are, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so what we're going to do now, is we're going to grab our medical kit. I'm just going to go through the medical bit quite quickly and explain what 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 you use what for where and, and what works best on everything. So if we go to the medical box... You'll see in there all the things that we have um, for um, available for the medic. So, as a, as a fighting medic, um, and especially as a platoon medic, your main loadout <coughs> will be medical gear. So, offensive capability, basically, all you really need your weapon for is point defence, alright? Because you should only be providing flank or rear security in the fire team. Um, so, you don't need massive amounts. You only need enough ammunition to survive one contact. So, at the most, you should have six magazines. <coughs> Smoke grenades are your priority, so you should have always carry the maximum amount of smoke grenades, so five smoke grenades. And then basically, the first aid equipment that you need to carry will basically be based down on experience. But what you need to carry the most of is packing bandages, elastic bandages, supplemented with quick clot bandages. So just for the purposes of training today, take 10 packing bandages, 10 elastic bandages, and 10 field bandages. Uh, take some, and just take some saline. Just take one, two, uh, well, yeah. Take two, take one five, or two 500 mil saline. Don't worry about the blood. And everyone carry two first aid kits and two surgical kits. How many quick cloth is that? Uh, just take 10. Oh, in fact, five. Right, no training. basic bandage. No, no basic bandage. Right. Uh, and tourniquet, sorry. Yeah, grab tourniquets, morphine and auto injector. All right, so if we all, if you open up the inventory list and just look at it, um, it will be easier um, if for this fight. And I'll just explain what you do with everything. So the basic bandage is basically a field dressing um, and it stems from, you know, when every soldier carried at least one basic dressing. And the, the basic dressing is basically only really useful on um, abrasions and contusions. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's for the very minorest of wounds, so scrapes and stuff like that. Your packing bandage is, you know, for, it, it, it's basically your, your bread and butter packaging for a serious trauma. So if you have got an avulsion injuries are always going to be a packing bandage. That that's the bandage that you're you're going to use for that. Packing bandages are also used in large velocity wounds. So if you've got because you'll have large or small velocity wounds. A large velocity wound 
it's going to be a packing bandage. So think about it, avulsion and velocity wounds are holes, and a packing bandage fills the hole, yeah? So if it's a big wound, it's going to need a packing bandage. Elastic bandages pretty much deal effectively with all other injuries, okay? So uh, lacerations, abrasions, contusions, crushes, cuts, uh, lacerations, oh, I said that twice, I don't know why, and punctures, um, elastic bandages will do the trick. Or what the elastic basher does, elastic bandage basically um, has a, f it's basically a peer half bandage. So it's a compression bandage. So if you've got a laceration, for example, is a cut on the arm. So by play, uh, by applying the elastic bandage, you're applying ba um, you're applying basic pressure on the wound, and you know which will hopefully aid to um, which will aid to uh, first aid. Now the quick clot, there's a lot of discussion about what, what do we do with quick clot. In real life, a quick clot goes on every wound, okay, because a quick clot starts a coagulation process. In, in ACE, however, quick clot only seems to be really effective on small velocity wounds. However, from a roll points perspective, and I suggest, I would imagine for wounds reopening, if you applied a quick clot bandage on all small velocity wounds, uh, before pu um, putting any other bandage on. Once, the, uh, w once you've bandaged it correctly, it will be dark blue. Uh, you know, so that, that's what you want to... A lot of people are saying just bin off quick, uh, quick clot bandages. However, in real life, you put quick clot bandages on everything. You ba they're basically a little square. They're not a roll like they are in that picture. They're basically a little square. Quick clot goes over the wound, and then the dressing goes on, on top of the quick clot. But in ACE, they're only really useful in small velocity wounds. And the reason for that is weight. There's only so many, so a small velocity wound um, is, uh, I don't know, one kilo, whereas a, a large packing wound is uh, like 600 grams. So it's a, it's a weight thing, really. So rather than carrying 50 packing bandages, you might not always need large pa packing bandages. Just carry 30, you know, packing bandages and 10 uh, quick clock bandages. And uh, that will get you over um, all those that, that will, you know, deal with any weight issues you've got. And th that's basically, so, but basically what you need to know as a fire team medic is elastic bandages will pretty much get you out of trouble all the time. Apart from avulsions or velocity wounds, which in that case you need to use packing bandages. Everyone happy with the, 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 <coughs> the fuck wittery that is the amount of bandages available in ACE. Yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. good with that? So, as a medic, all you need to if it's a if it's an avulsion or a velocity wound, packing bandages is going to be your port of call. If it's any other type of wound, elastic bandages will pretty much do the trick. Okay, tourniquets. Tourniquets apply to the limbs, and they are a uh, they will stop bleeding. Um, they are very useful bits of kit. They go on much faster than bandages. They are especially ideal within the buddy system. So if you've got a man down um, and he's bleeding heavily from a limb, you can just whack a tourniquet on and carry on the fight. Uh, tourniquets will not cause any pain unless they're worn for more than five minutes. Um, so you can't just put a tourniquet on. If you get shot in the leg, you can't just put a tourniquet on and carry on the game. You're going to have to get that wound treated um, because it will start adding, causing pain. And once the pain gets strung enough, you'll pass out. Morphine, all morphine does is it, um, it gets rid of pain. All right, that's, that, that's all you need to know. There's loads of other stuff affected with it, but with it, like, it lowers blood pressure and it lowers heart rate. But all you need to know as a basic medic is morphine um, lowers, uh, gets rid of pain. However, you should never inject morphine more than one, more than one, uh, the, the magic rule is 10. If you inject more than one morphine within 10 minutes, there's a good chance um, that your, your guy will go unconscious. So, your morphine doesn't get rid of pain, it just stops the effects of pain. Everyone happy with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. The, the symptoms for that is a white flashing screen, uh, and it affects people's aim and stuff like that. If you give them one dose of morphine, it won't work straight away, so give it a couple of minutes. Um, and then all that will do is that will eliminate, that will alleviate the symptoms of pain. However, after 10 minutes, if they haven't been fully treated back at base or anything like that, that pain will come back. So you may have to give them morphine again. Uh, but we'll come on to that in a minute when we talk about vitals. Atrophine and auto-injector, all you need to know is that slows the heart rate dump. 
epinephrine injector all you need to know is that speeds the heart rate up okay and it will also um, it will also it's uh, an epinephrine is a shot of adrenaline to heart so it just gives it it just gives it a kick and that's why it's used on unconscious casualties so if somebody is in pain the way ace works you need to eliminate the pain before they'll wake up so if you treated the pain with morphine and they still haven't woke up then epinephrine will wake them up okay so plasma and blood pretty much do the same thing um, basically you have as well as bleeding you have blood pressure um, and once blood pressure drops between, below a certain level the player will go into cardiac arrest or you will become unconscious so all blood will do is it will top up the blood um, you know to prevent that from happening the, the signs and symptoms is a saturation of the screen color so if you have really low blood your, your color will start to saturate um, and you'll hear heartbeat in your ears and by giving them that treatment all that does is alleviate that surgical kit will basically stitch up any wound so it won't reopen if you use the wrong type of bandages on wounds they will they will um, they will no matter what bandage you use it will patch it up eventually however if you use the wrong bandage it will use more bandages of that type and the wound will reopen what a surgical kit will do is it will stitch up the wound so it won't reopen however surgical kits can only be used once all the bleeding has stopped personal kits will totally clear um, totally heal the people completely and again personal kits can only be used uh, once uh, all bleeding is stopped. That's basically what you need to know as a fire team medic. Is there anything you want to know about all the kit there? Has anyone got any questions on it? Is it right that you can't take blood into the field so you've got to use saline? Yes, your saline will go in your backpack and you can carry that pretty much indefinitely. However, blood has got a limited need to be refrigerated so it's got a lifetime. So basically, if you're, if you're uh, on a motorised patrol, out and about, you can keep blood and plasma within the vehicle. And so your vehicle will become your aid station, if you like. Um, so by people with low blood pressure, if you haven't got first aid kits or you can't get them healed up, um, you know, get, uh, get some blood pressure into them to heal, uh, we'll, we'll get their blood pressure back up. So a lot of times on the server, what people would do is they will just give people first aid kits to get them up. But then, in that case, you have to carry a uh, fucking inordinate amount of blood, uh, personal first aid kits. And personal first aid kits weigh a lot. As a fire team medic, you shouldn't really be carrying more than three. You should only have enough personal aid kits to deal with one large contact. So, a lot of times, especially in operations, um, people could be brought back round, they've only, got, uh, they've only had a slight wound, um, and they've just had a dip in blood pressure. So, you could just replace their blood, stitch their wounds up, and they can get back in the fight. But this, you know, it's all down to your platoon commander on whether he wants to get people into the fight or if he wants to get to base, if he wants to get back to base and get everyone healed up. So, what I'm saying there is, in a public server, personal first aid kits eliminate the need for blood. However, they weigh a lot. So sometimes you can get away with giving someone fluids and that will sort them back out. Um, but uh, you know meaning you don't have to use up all your personal first aid kits. Everyone happy with the distinction between the two? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so vitals. This is where everyone gets a bit like, fuck, that's where all the figures are, uh, and I'm not really sure what I need to do. You, may, you don't need to know all the vitals. All you need to know is what's normal. Um, and anything outside of normal is bad. Okay, so blood pressure, basically between 100 and 160 is good. So anything above that is, um, or anything below that is bad. So, you know, if they're below 100 on their blood pressure, that means you need to give them fluids. So either give them saline, if that's all you've got, um, or give them, um, give them blood um, if you're at an aid station. Once their blood pressure, then once you've administered the blood, um, check their blood pressure again, and hopefully it will be between the 100, and they'll be between the 100 and the 160 mark. Question? If yeah, go on. you mentioned blood and then you mentioned plasma, what's the difference between the yeah. two? Uh, it's it's basically life. Um, it, plasma can be used in anyone, and blood, <coughs> you know, is dependent on your blood type. I have no idea why they put both of them in, in, in Ace. It doesn't really make any sense. Um, you know, uh, 
I, I, I don't know why it's in there. They basically do the same function. Blood is the best. Plasma is, you know, um, is better than saline, uh, and saline is the cheapest. Um, but um, in Ace, I don't, I don't. Blood and plasma pretty much do the same thing at the moment. I don't know if they're working on it and they're going to bring blood types in. Uh, if they do, then you know, fuck me. That's going to be a lot. <laughs> but um, you know, plasma and blood pretty much do the same thing. Um, so I wouldn't really worry about plasma um, unless you're, you know, RPing the fuck out of your game session and you <laughs> want to imagine everyone's got a blood type and you want to pack it in your bag in a certain way, then fine. But it's basically... Plasma uh, oils. Yeah. yeah. So does blood. Yeah. So, no, yeah, no, that's that's a, yeah. yeah. So, you know, so saline is your go-to in your medics bag on the back and then blood in the vehicle or back at the aid station. Um... So yeah, but again, I don't know why they why they've differentiated like that, and then haven't added blood type. So yeah, that's. Uh, I would also say saline's good because it can flush, it can dilute drugs. So if you're having an OD situation. Yeah, but again, it's not really replicated in in Ace. Oh, so okay. uh, yeah, it, it, you know, it's, all saline will do is increase the blood pressure, but not as good as um, plasma or blood. Okay. So yeah, so as a medic. You carry. I would carry, as a fighting medic. Um, I would just carry maybe two at the most. Um, you know, of um, uh, two, two on my in my kit or like on my person. I would carry a couple of saline bags, and then I'd have um, uh, depending on the uh, on the amount of wounds. So maybe have uh, you know a couple of 500 and a couple of 250 for small wounds, and then back in your vehicle, you'd have your blood and your plasma. So. For l Below 20 is really bad. This is when the patient will drop into CPR. So if the blood pressure drops below 20, the patient's going to need CPR. And basically, what, how it works in the ACE medical system, it's a timer. Um, and by applying CPR, um, it increases that timer. So you need to, um, doing CPR will basically push the blood pressure back above 20. All right, but it, you need to then replace those fluids. Yeah, so th this is where this is where it gets this is where get people get confused about all the different ACE functions. Basically, so like I said, 100 to 160, that's good. Everything that that's fine. If it drops below between 100 and uh, and 20, is bad. If it's so, you need to give them fluid. If it drops below 20, they'll go into CPR. So that means you need to give them CPR as well as blood pressure to get it back over 20. Does everyone understand that? Yep. That's it, that's it it's yep, in its yep. most basic form. So, you want to get blood pressure to 100 to make them okay. If it drops below 20, you want to give them CPR and then give them blood. Or, or give them whatever fluid you've got to get it but as close to 100 as you can. Okay, so heart rate. Again, uh, you know, there's loads of figures. And again, I suggest go and have a look at the ACE Medical Wiki afterwards. But all you need to know is a good heart rate is between... 45 and 119. Anything over 119, they might go into cardiac arrest. So what could we use there? What bit of kit lowers the heart rate? Have I said it? No. Atro uh, atrophine. Atrophine lowers the heart rate. So if you've got someone who has got a higher than 100, uh, 120 um, beats per minute, there is a chance they could go into cardiac arrest. Their symptom for that is they will hear their heartbeat in their ear with a hard, steady, with a rapid, fast pulse. If their heartbeat drops below 45 beats per minute, that's bad. Um, so what can we do to increase the heart rate? Epinephrine. 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 Yeah. So epinephrine. So basically, you want to keep the heart rate between 45 and 119. And as a basic fighting medic, that's really all you need to know. Again, as I said, on the ACE wiki, it's got a full breakdown of this, uh, you know, blood pressures, heart rates, which is more for, you know, if you want to be a bit too medic. But as a fire team medic, um, you know, you just need to know what's, what's good. So anything below 45 is bad. Anything over 119 is bad. So if it's below, I need to increase it. If it's above, I need to decrease it. And uh, that is pretty much all the theory around the kit. And uh, if, as long as everyone's happy with that, we'll move on to the actual casualty drills. <coughs> Anyone got any more questions? Nope. nope. Everyone happy? All right, yeah. good. If, all right, guys, if you just grab a rifle um, and five smoke grenades and then come back here.
don't get ammunition. <laughs> it's a long range radio. <laughs> yeah, the next box is over, lads. Next box is over. In this one over here. Okay. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. Where did Bob come? I don't know. <coughs> Here he is. Oh. Oh, is he? The other thing you need as a combat medic is uh, a good internet connection and no unscheduled uh, maintenance. Yeah, like I had. Huh. I, I feel like shit for that. <laughs> it was right. unscheduled, so. <sighs> All right, everyone's here, yeah. Alright, so a basic loadout for a medic. So, like I said, you need uh, you only need enough am uh, ammunition to provide point to, uh, to provide defence in uh, one large contact. So, offensive capability. All you really need is a basic. Uh, you need a rifle uh, for you know defending yourself and defending the casualty. Um, and you need six magazines at the most and five white smoke grenades. Um, nice to have is blue smoke grenades, and that's purely for marking Kazibak LZs. However, really, that should be done, um, you know, by either the platoon sergeant or fighting leads. Um, so, you know, but, you know, uh, blue is the SOP for casualties in ETR. So if you've got blue smoke, it just helps out. Uh, I did not uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, you know, operationally, uh, you know, there, there is no set thing for smoke. Every unit has a different SOP. Um, yeah. You know, like uh, dependent on the theatre, wh wherever they are. But in ETR, just you know, so we're all off the same hymn page. Blue. I mean, if you see blue smoke, it means casualties. That's basically, you know, that's what we've gone for. As okay. well as red being bad, green being good. We, we found it was the easiest thing that everyone just sort of knows uh, instinctively. So green is always is like a hot safe. A red always denotes enemy positions, and green always. The green, purple, and everything else would denote the type of LZs and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so like I said, so six ma uh, six magazines and five smoke. So and then again, right? Oh, the, shit. Uh, I thought, we not to get I thought you said no magazine. Yeah, we're going to the black. Oh, range. so yeah, no, I'm talking. I'm talking about a, a basic loadout right. for a minute. So oh. you six magazines at the most, and um, <laughs> f uh, definitely five smoke grenades, um, and if, if 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 you've got room, two uh, uh, one or two blue smoke grenades. Um, again, you, you know, you could carry a frag, maybe two frag grenades if you want, but if you're in the position, you'll either be, if it gets to the point where the medics use the grenades, you know, <laughs> fucking go, it's, it's game over, man, it's bad. All right, you, the fire team should be protecting the medic. Um, you know, but there's, you know, you know, you know what, I'll put, you know, public service is a public server, and the medic may be the last man standing, so you might need to provide <laughs> the defence to yourself. But generally, if the medic's using grenades, you know, if I heard on the radio the medic was using grenades, I'd be like, right, that, that's probably game over for that team. Okay, so, um, <laughs> the main, uh, again, I don't want to give you a specific loadout, uh, you know, because people then either disagree with it or agree with it. Um, but what you need to carry is you shouldn't be carrying 10 personal first aid kits or 10 surgical kits. They weigh a lot and they affect your ability to move. Um, cause, as I said before, as a fire team medic, uh, you're an infantry man first, um, you know, uh, before you're, and you need to move with the team. So, you, you know, you need to be light. So one to one to three personal first aid kits. You basically shouldn't have, so, uh, you know, you shouldn't have a first aid kit for everyone in the section um, because, you know, that's bad karma anyway, but you, you only want to take one or two casualties. And you should, at the same time, you should only want one or two um, uh, surgical kits 
Your mainstay of bandages want to be elastic and packing bandages, ranging from 15 to 20 of each. Um, the quick clot dressings, again, what, again, they're, you know, in real life they're used on everything, but in the armour, small velocity wounds, they deal with pretty well. Uh, probably about 10 of them. Um, and then you're always going to want more morphine than you want epinephrine and atrophine. Um, so morphine, you know, somewhere between te uh, 10 and 15, and with epinephrine and apatrine, uh, somewhere between 5 and 8, whatever you want to carry. And then tourniquets, you know, 5 is a good standard. Hopefully, um, and what, you know, all the riflemen should have some form of basic kit on them anyway. And a basic first aid kit for a rifleman would be two elastic bandages, two packing bandages, uh, two morphine, one, ep one epinephrine and one tourniquet, um, and one bag of saline. The good way with the ACE medical system is once you start giving first aid, it will exhaust the casualties first aid supplies before it exhausts yours. So like, I see people running around with 50 bandages sometimes, but if everyone in your squad has got bandages on them, you'll use those before it will deplete your inventory. So just carry what you need to carry, and um, don't weigh yourself down and use the vehicles um, for, you know, all the big stuff. So just grab, um, based on what I just told you, just go to the first aid box and get out enough medical supplies um, to be able to survive a contact with the enemy. I mean, yeah, we're not supposed to bring blood really into the field unless using a vehicle, but do you want us to, to for this example? Ah, uh, no, just, just carry sailing. Just carry sailing? sailing. Just, okay. Yeah, yeah. And blood in the vehicle. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, so before we move off to start with the battle drill side of it, uh, the most important question is what happens when the medic goes down? Uh, basically, in operations and in uh, the public server, if you get the medic to the medical tent alive, he will come out better than when he went in. Okay, so as long as he's got some life in him, if you get him and the medical tents look like this. You've all seen it on the public server. Uh, no, on the public server, they're not like that for some reason, are they? They're those... No, they're the weird tents. Yeah, they're the weird tents. But, um, mm. yeah, whatever. Uh, if you, As a medic, obviously, you can't first aid your... You can't give yourself a first aid kit. Um, so if, if you're wounded uh, and you need to heal yourself, the, uh, f the only way you're going to fully heal yourself is back at base, um, using the... Either on the operations, either the medical tent or on the public server, using the medical aid station. There are also medical vehicles on operations as well. Yeah. 